Welcome back guys. Last time I gave a basic overview of how to create an algorithm to reproduce an image using just a single thread wrapped around nails. It involved a lot of modeling, a little bit of math, and a sneak peek of the machine used to create the final product. In this video, I'll be taking some inspiration from CT scanners to improve this algorithm. It turns out that CT scanners make use of something called the radon transform, which we can repurpose for string art. Now what inspired me to use the radon transform? Well, you did. Many of you did, actually. So thank you, this video wouldn't be possible without such a helpful community supporting me. But what is the radon transform, and how can we use it to convert some input image into string art? Let's find out. Here's the aim of the game. We have a circular white canvas of radius r, and we have n nails equally spaced around the edge. We can parameterize any line of string with a starting nail angle, which I'll call psi1, and an ending nail angle, which I'll call psi2. And our job is to recreate an image as best we can by just drawing straight black lines between these nails. Okay, so what is the radon transform then? Well, for the purpose of this video, let's make it simple, and let's say we just have an image like this. Now imagine what happens if we get a light source and shine a ray of light through this image. Now, this line of light can be fully described by only using two parameters, an angle from the horizontal, which I'll call alpha, and a perpendicular distance to the line, which I'll call s. Now, what does this line of light do? Well, let's put a detector on the other side. This detector only measures one thing. It measures all the combined stuff that the light ray bumped into along the way. In this context, it measures what's called a line integral, which is the area under the curve along this path. We call this detector value rho, and it's a function of both alpha and s. As you can imagine, if we were to change the values of alpha and s, such that the light ray passed through parts of the image that are generally more dark, then the area under the curve would be larger, leading to a larger rho value. This is important, and we'll exploit this feature in our algorithm later. Now imagine shining lots of light beams, so many of them in fact, that the entire image is scanned with every possible combination of alpha and s values. If you collect all this data and plot rho versus alpha and s, then you'll get something that looks like this. This is called a sinogram. And so what is the radon transform? Well, it's just a way to convert, or transform, an image into this rho of alpha and s. And it turns out that programming languages like MATLAB and Python can perform this transformation lightning fast. Okay, but what's the advantage of doing this transformation in the first place? How does this help us with string art? Well, the largest value of rho, which is this point right here, will correspond to the line which passes through the most dark pixels of the image, hinting that we should draw this line. And so this motivates the idea that we should do a fitting just like before, but this time in the radon domain. In other words, can we represent rho of s and alpha as a weighted sum of each of the possible lines? This rho line 1 is the radon transform of the first line, rho line 2 is the radon transform of the second line, etc. And x1 and x2, etc. are the binary weights, 1 or 0, that we need to find. We spent a lot of time talking about how to solve this type of equation last time, but to do it this time, it'll help to find an analytical equation for the radon transform of each line. So let's do that. Finding the radon transform of a thin line of thread is hard, generally, because it involves calculating the line integral by hand. I won't bore you with the mathematics, but it turns out, after using a lot of tricks and a few assumptions, you can simplify rho line of alpha and s into a very innocent-looking function. 
and this is something that a computer can calculate really, really quickly. At the end of the day, what we have is a formula for rapidly calculating the radon transform of any individual line. This is what it looks like for this line, and this is what it looks like for this line, and this is what it looks like for this line, for example. Okay, so this is the game plan. We will start with the radon transform of the image. Then we'll identify alpha and s values of the brightest point. That'll be the first line we draw. Then we'll create the radon transform of the line corresponding to those alpha and s values, and then subtract that from the original radon transform of the image. All of that is just one iteration, so let's do it again. Identify the maximum point in this new sinogram, draw the corresponding line, create the corresponding radon transform of that line, and subtract one more time. This process goes on and on and on until we meet some desired threshold or some predefined number of maximum lines to draw. And then we just sit back and relax. Oh, wait, uh, something's wrong. The edges aren't being drawn properly for some reason. What's going on here? Well, after a lot of soul searching and inspiration, I finally found out what was wrong. We don't actually care about the maximum value of rho at each iteration, which is a measure of the line which has the largest total darkness. What we really care about is the maximum value of rho per unit length. This is because we only want to select the line with the largest average darkness, not total darkness. And this is because we don't want to penalize lines that are very short, and we don't want to reward lines that are very long. So let's account for this. Let's consider a line of length L on our circular canvas, and let's see if we can find it in terms of alpha and S. Well, because this is 90 degrees by definition, that means a right-angled triangle is formed with the radius R. This means that we can just use Pythagoras to find L. In this case, it's L on 2 squared plus S squared is equal to R squared. And that means that L, the length of our line, is equal to 2 times the square root of R squared minus S squared. Another thing that needs to be done as well is to change the way the line is parameterized. We would ideally like to describe each line in terms of a starting nail angle, psi 1, and an ending nail angle, psi 2. So we need a way to convert alpha and s into psi1 and psi2. I'll zoom through the boring math again, but the end result is that the starting nail angle is psi1 is equal to alpha minus inverse cos s on r, and the ending nail angle is psi2 is equal to alpha plus inverse cos of s on r. And that's it. We now know which nail we start at and which nail we end at for every single line. And that's basically it. With these minor adjustments, we can now run the same iteration scheme as last time, and it'll work. But we still have one more trick up our sleeves. It turns out that any color can be broken up into separate cyan, magenta, yellow, and black parts, CMYK. So by running this algorithm four times, we can get a colored string art. Oh, and uh, for those of you who are interested, I have posted additional information on my new Patreon page about how the string art machine works, the code that I use to make the string art, along with other tips and tricks, and the theory behind the mysterious fast Fourier transform method that I alluded to last video, and much more. Enjoy. Enjoy.